What is up my fellow bro gamers, Mr. J313 here, and back again on some Mass Effect Andromeda. Now today, we have some Batarian Scrapper gameplay full game on Firebase Zero Gold against the Outlaw. So let's get right into this video because I have a couple of things I want to talk about. So obviously I'm showing off some more Batarian Scrapper gameplay. I believe at this time I had him at level 12. I'm using the Dehan shotgun. And he worked really well with it. So, let's go over real quick because I want to get into some speculation. Now, talking about the Batarian Scrapper, I have him at level 20 right now. And I will be doing a build guide on him. That video will be coming out either this weekend or Monday. It'll depend really on other upload schedule. Brian and I are trying to plan for doing the 100 sub podcast. We really want to get that done today because I'm really needing to clear off a lot of files and that's taking up some space on my hard drive and I'm really wanting to get it done because I know that the next week I'm going to have a very busy week but I promise I will be staying on top of all of this new Mass Effect Andromeda content. I'm wanting to do a video on all of the new weapon types as well as the Kishok Harpoon Gun that I'm really hoping to get very soon. I need to start opening some premium packs again but because there is so much content now, Bioware just said, hey, fuck you, we're going to make it even harder to get the cool new stuff. So, moving on from that, I was lucky enough to get the Batarian Scrapper right off the bat and start doing videos on him to show him off to you guys for if the RNG Jesus has not treated you so well. I feel like Bioware actually told me and said, hey, you know what, I feel like we've been too hard on you with all of these packs, so here you go. Here is the new Batarian Scrapper. Have fun. Anyways, talking about the Batarian Scrapper really fast. He's a really good character. I see him as a very tanky, aggressive playstyle. He can use ARs and shotguns very effectively. I could see a deadly melee build coming from him because his melee will detonate combos. I see a lot of different options when using him. So the build guide that I'm going to be doing is more of a base soldier build guide, a very aggressive playstyle. That's going to be the first build guide that I do. After that, I may reset him and do a melee build. I may do another more defensive build. I'm just going to have to play around with him more. I have played a ton of games with him because I have gotten him to level 20 already. I did that in just a couple of hours because I was having a ton of fun playing him. So, moving on from that, let's jump into some speculation because that's what I wanted to talk about on this video. I wanted to do some gameplay of the new, of the new Batarian Scrapper to show off for you guys. But I wanted to talk about some speculation, because on one of the new Apex missions, the description kinda has me a little worried. Now, as you may or may not know, the Batarians were a murderous pirate... Well, I don't want to say murderous pirate race, because I don't, I don't think all Batarians were like this. Now... The other Batarian, I don't know if it is a male or female, we have no other news or info on the second Batarian, but basically two Batarians came to Andromeda on the Solarian Arc as security detail because they didn't want to live the pirate life anymore, so they jumped ship and boarded with the Solarians and came to Andromeda. Now, the Batarians known in the rest of the Mass Effect universe back in the Milky Way, they were mainly pirates. They hated everyone else. They hated all other species. They were basically just murderous pirates. That's, that's really all they did. That's what they were known for. Whenever you found Batarians, they were pretty much mercenaries. The only time you didn't see a bad Batarian was if you were on, say, the Citadel, and they had to be chill. But they probably, on the inside, wanted to slit your throat and throw you into space. Moving on, though, it kind of surprised me whenever they said, hey... Guess what? You get to play as a Batarian in Andromeda. I didn't really see that coming. I don't really think anyone did. Because, you know, what? What? who's going to come to Andromeda? Who, who are we going to be able to play as in multiplayer? I know, going back, because my last video, I did a Batarian level 1 on gold, and I talked about him and patch 1.09. And I did skim over, you know, kind of my gripe about it not being in single player. I don't want to really bitch about it too much because I do enjoy multiplayer and all of the characters that are going to be coming to it and I love covering it for you guys and doing build guides but going back I, I really do wish they would start putting some more single player DLC out whether they are really about to do the Quarian Arc DLC or not if I really just want them to confirm that I think they need to put multiplayer on a hold I know they're wanting to do the Apex missions as sort of a multiplayer lore 
But what Bioware needs to understand is not everyone wants to be on multiplayer. There's there's a lot of single player fans, and on their teaser trailer for it, I definitely saw that dislikes were taking over on that video. So, moving back to the Batarians, we don't really know who this second Batarian is, but this next Apex mission, the description for this mission kind of has me worried. So I'm going to read off this description for the Apex mission, The Call From Inside. Mission Description we believe an intruder accessed our equipment inside Firebase Magma to trace a signal. Surveillance indicates it's a damn Batarian. We should investigate. So what that tells me right there is this second Batarian that came with the Andromeda Initiative is obviously some sort of traitor. Now, maybe not. Maybe there's a reason, but I highly doubt this. So here's my speculation. The Quarian Arc is under attack, right? Okay, we don't know who's attacking it. Obviously, it's not these two Batarians. Obviously, it's not this Batarian. So maybe it's the other Batarian. He's tra he or she is tracing a signal, but who is that? Who are they sending it to? Obviously, they're not going to go attack it themselves. That's that's crazy. They don't even know where that ship is, but they're trying to find out. But who are they sending the signal to? Are they sending it to the Ket? Was there a Batarian ship that came? Now, I doubt there's a Batarian Ark, because the Arks are fucking massive. Maybe there's a giant Batarian pirate ship. Hey, what about that for a DLC? What if there's not a Quarian Ark DLC? Or what if the Quarian Ark DLC actually has Batarians attacking? What if that's a new enemy that we get to fight in the future? They could bring that to multiplayer as well, while pleasing single-player fans. I don't know if that's something a lot of people would be happy about, since it... I don't know, you know, it's not really new, but it would be new for Andromeda, I guess. I don't I don't know. I don't know how people would register and feel for Batarians becoming a new enemy because would it only be Batarians? Would they be mixed kind of like the Outlaw are? I don't know how that would work. I'd really like to see it because I think it might could work. I think a pirate DLC might be kind of cool. But regardless of what I'm I think about that, what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. What do you think this Batarian is up to? Are they tracing the signal and sending it to the Ket? Are they sending it back to a pirate ship full of Batarians that are attacking the Quarians? Because honestly, after reading that, I'm kind of thinking that could be what's going on. Maybe the Batarians decided that they wanted to follow the Andromeda Initiative because they weren't invited, but... That's understandable because they are kind of murderous pirates who wanted to kill everyone in the Milky Way. So, what what is it? Are, if it is the Ket, that's obviously not good. If it's the Batarians sending a pirate ship, that's obviously not good either. Now, for those of you who may or may not know, the Quarian Ark has multiple races. It's not just the Quarians. It is the Quarians, the Hanar, the Drell, the Volus, and the Elcor. So... It is obviously going to be a jam-packed ship. And it's probably a pretty big one considering they had to take the extra time for environmental reasons, for safety and storage to get everyone on it. Now, in my humble opinion, I personally think this arc is going to be much bigger than any of the other arcs because it has these all of these different species. Now, obviously, all of the other arcs Except for the, well, let me back up. The only arc that had multiple species was the, actually, yeah, the human arc. Because it did have a Asari on it. I don't know if it had anyone else. I don't think the Solarian Turian or Asari arc had anyone other than their species. Now, the home base, I can't remember what it's called. I'm drawing a blank. It had all of the rest of the species on it, and they were in cryosleep when you found them. So, what's going on with the Quarant Arc? Is it going to be bigger? Because it obviously, if you think about it, it would have to be. But if it is the Batarians attacking them, why are they attacking them specifically? Was it a time deal because the Quarians had to push back their launch day? So the Batarians had extra time to prep and follow them? What is the deal? Is it the Ket? The Ket are tracking them down to exalt all of these species what could it be there there is a lot of things that could be up in the air about speculation for this Quarian arc and this batarian who is seemingly a traitor at this point so i'm really hoping for in the near future at least for the multiplayer side going back i honestly really do hope for some more single player dlc i know i never did a let's play on the single player i know that in one of my 
really past videos on Andromeda, it was brought up, there was a suggestion for me to do it, and if I got enough requests for it, then I would, but at this point, I feel like there's enough Let's Plays out there, but if it's requested enough, like I said, I will do it, especially I would really love to do it if all of this DLC for single player starts coming out, if it's big enough, so regardless, they will do single player DLC, I wish they would be a little bit more timely on it, but the new Apex missions, be me being a multiplayer fan, I'm slightly okay with it. Especially how they're kind of tying the Apex missions to single player. Honestly, and what I'm thinking, and whether it's a good idea or not, I can't speak for that. Bioware is just going to have to figure that on, out on their own. Obviously, the rest of the community doesn't think so. But are they holding single player DLC back? to let the Apex missions build up to it? Because in a way, you have to think it would make sense. So the Quarren arc comes in, and then we get teased with the Batarians. Obviously, everyone's going to think the Batarians are on the Quarren arc, and that's what's happening, that's who's attacking them. Well, maybe not. Well, maybe so, because this other Batarian might be a traitor, and they're sending either a Batarian pirate ship after them, or they're sending the Ket. So could that be the deal? Are they building up to it? Because they don't want to release small bits and patches for single player? Is it a reason because they're lazy at development? Or is it a reason that maybe it'd be too difficult to put in with all of these small little updates for single player? They just want to do a giant DLC for it? There's a lot of different reasons and we kind of have to start speculating on why they're doing it. I think, you know, it's understandable that we as a community are just giving them total backlash for putting patch 1.9 out and it being almost three gig a three gigabyte update i can note i can understandably see why we as a community are upset for the most part but i kind of have to say i think we all should take a step back and think about it from that standpoint maybe they're building up to it now i know that there are plenty of people who aren't playing multiplayer so it kind of sucks for you guys that aren't because you have no interest in the Apex story missions. So I kind of wish there was another way they could have done it. But I think as a multiplayer fan, I'm okay with it. So, you know, they can't please everyone in the community. It, they can't do it. So I guess we're just really going to have to wait and see and start speculating on what's going to happen. In a way, I kind of have to say that you guys out there who want more single player DLC and less multiplayer updates... This could be a good thing because now we have plenty to speculate on for the DLC. Maybe it's going to be a bigger DLC than we thought instead of just going and saving the Quarian Arc. Maybe now it'll be expanded upon these new Batarians coming in. Because think about it is if this second Batarian is transmitting a signal to another Batarian pirate ship of where the Quarian Arc is and they're attacking, think about this. We're going to have a new enemy faction within the single player and they will no doubtably bring that to multiplayer. But how is that going to play out? Because then we're going to have the Quarian Arc to deal with and we're going to have to save everyone there and then expanding them onto our newfound home planets. Plus, we're going to have the Batarians to contend with. Maybe they'll even do another future DLC for getting rid of the Batarian pirate ship. You know, there's just a lot of different things that we have to think about now because there's a lot of possibilities that have just opened up just from this small little description from an Apex mission. So, you know, multiplayer, their Apex little hints in that. I feel like Bioware is saying, hey, you know what? We obviously see that the community is getting really mad at us, so let's start throwing out some little teases because up until this point, I can't remember a teaser trailer for any of the new Apex missions. Now, they may have done it. I can't remember them doing any. Are they going to start doing it for all of them? Or is this just a tease simply because they're trying to get us ready for this single player DLC? What is going to be the deal? You know, there's, there's a lot to think about, a lot to sit and speculate on. Maybe... Hell, maybe it's not the Batarians or the Cat. Maybe it's something completely different. Or maybe all of this speculation is wrong. Maybe this Batarian is just stupid. I don't know. Maybe they're, they don't know what they're doing. You know, maybe they started working with the Outlaws. Maybe they're not working with the Cat at all. I could, I could see that. 
And then the outlaws are actually attacking the Corrin Arc. Maybe that's a possibility. Remnant, I... I heard this as a theory that the Remnant could be attacking because they got too close to an artifact or a Remnant planet or something like that. I don't really believe that. There could be a lot of things. We just have to speculate, and I'm really interested to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments below on what you think that description means. What's up with the other Batarian? Are you really hoping for some single-player DLC next, or are you really interested to see more multiplayer DLC? I want to hear your guys' thoughts and comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to smash that thumbs up. It'll really help us out. If you're new around here, be sure to subscribe because now is a great time to do it. We're doing videos every Monday and Friday and more just like this when we have some really special content for you guys. Because right now, we have loads of new content to show off. So guys, as always, this is Mr. J313 and I will catch you on the next one.